Xanax, one of the worst things you can take to go to sleep. I didn't realize how bad it was for you. I, I would just take it because it would help me sleep. It wasn't until like a month in, I went to my doctor and I was like, no, I've been taking it every night. He's like, eh. But when I would take Xanax, my REM cycle, I would get good sleep, deep sleep, mm -hmm. but no REM cycle sleep. Damn. Do you know what the worst one for your sleep period is? Alcohol. 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 All right, guys, got Van Oaks. It's been a while since you've been on a pod, right? Yeah, it's been a minute. I was doing some research. You used to go on a lot like five years ago. Yeah, yeah, I kind of toned back a lot of that stuff, um, but this is a welcome opportunity. Yeah. Jam with you, it's been a minute. And you're up to new things now, so it'll be exciting. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. Are you still doing the Diesel Brothers stuff full time? or? Is... Uh, so I consult with them. I stepped away as the CMO there in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, did some other stuff, So, but I still work pretty closely. With nice, them. yeah, that was your bread and butter at the time, right? At the time, that was the big one, right? It started out as just agency work and then morphed into like a CMO position. Yeah. Took a lot of time. I've never seen a TV show transition so well to e-commerce. Dude, it, it, it was the number one TV show on Discovery Channel in history launch. Wow. Like, because I think because they had a social media following and then they came out with a TV show, mm -hmm. it was the number one. It, and it ranked up there for eight years until they decided they just didn't want to do it. Incredible. Anymore, you know? Yeah, there's only so much you could do, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were just like over. I think they were just over it. They yeah. realized that YouTube paid a hell of a lot more money than Discovery Channel. Do that? Pay. Oh, dude. YouTube it's does? Not, oh, it's not even close. Wow. Not even close because they were getting paid. Reality TV show, people don't realize, the, the, only the stars get paid. Everybody mm. else in the reality TV show is not getting paid. Wow. So only the two main guys were getting paid. And they were getting paid like, I don't know, 20 million or 20, 20,000 an episode. Mm -hmm. But then when you go to YouTube and you transition to, you know, 3.5 million followers, you get a, hundred, a million views. Mm. Just the CPMs alone, not even integrations or anything, just the CPMs alone pay you 100 grand an episode. Wow. So Mr. Beast is making a million an episode, probably. These guys, these guys, well, it, it ranges. So CPMs range from four dollars up to fifteen if you're finance, right? So like these Graham guys and all the finance guys crush. It. Yeah, and you were getting a ton of views on Snapchat too, right? Yeah, we were crushing Snapchat for a long time, and and Snapchat's making a big resurgence right now too. So all like that. all the influencers back because they're paying so they're well. paying the most. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. By far, too. It's not even close. It's not even My close. My Instagram is a joke, dude, because I get like 30 million monthly impressions or whatever, yeah. and I get like 10 bucks. Yeah. It's crazy. It's it's unbelievable what Snapchat's paying Snap stars, you know? And all the, all you got to do is just post because it serves your ad every like in between every two stories or yeah. three stories, and you get paid every time. Dude, if I got 30 million on Snapchat, that'd be, yeah. lo what, like 100K these, at least? These guys crush. I, I know like well, Logan Paul and all these guys were the ones that got the decent guys into it. They're like, dude, you got to do this. Yeah. Like it's paying more than any of these other platforms. Nuts. Yeah. Bryce Hall and Dobrik, they're crushing it. Yeah. And you yeah. were the biggest spender on Snap in 2019, right? Yeah. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I don't think I was, I won the Snap Star of the Year in mm -hmm. 2019. And I don't think it was, I was the best media buyer on the platform. I just think we were spending <laughs> more than most people were spending. So yeah. they like got an award. They flew me out to New York. I did the whole thing. Um, it was actually pretty cool. Like not a lot of other, pla like, Facebook's never flown me out. Spent right. over $100 million on Facebook. They don't give a Damn. shit. They don't even know who I am, right? Spent that much right? on Facebook? Oh, yeah. Over Holy time. Crap. Uh, but Snap spent a lot less, and they're like flying me out. Like, they flew me out to LA last week for a meeting with Evan, with the owner. Wow. Who literally spoke to 50 of us that were just D2C, like, That's dope. advertisers. And he's just like, what do you guys want? What else can we do better? Like, he's actually working there. That's so Snap's cool, Snap's putting in the work right I've now, I've never man. seen Facebook or Twitter or never. anyone None do None of them even give a LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, damn, 100 million on Facebook. And now are you see, still seeing success with paid ads on Facebook? Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's gotten it's, more expensive. It's, it's more expensive, but it's still the 800 pound gorilla in the room. It's still, it's, it's the necessary evil, right. right? I would say most brands are like 60, 70% Facebook. You know, most of my brands that we work with are like 50. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it's kind of split up between other platforms. TikTok. But it's still, it's, it's still the primary driver for prospect. Nice. And are you still doing the giveaway model? Yeah. Still right. Well, so the Diesel Brothers, they when I stepped away in 2021, they've kind of they do it occasionally, but they're partnering more with brands. They just don't have a ton of time with the YouTube channel. Yep. But my agency, Goat Media, that's what we do. We have a law firm in house so that people and and just to explain what the giveaway model is, it's like every dollar you spend on our merchandise gets you entered to win a truck right. or a Lamborghini or something like that. And we actually give these away every month, right? Mm -hmm. So inside the the agency, we have a law firm that licenses and registers and bonds this so that you're all covered mm -hmm. legally. And then, yeah, we push traffic because when you're 
when your offer is that good, you're selling a t-shirt and I'm selling a t-shirt. But if you buy my t-shirt, you can win a truck. <laughs> it's an auction based platform. I'm going to win all those auctions. Right. So, so we find that traffic's usually three times cheaper when you're Damn. running. Yeah. That's insane. Just, just the CPMs alone because the offer is so good and it gets a lot of engagement and people mm. are like, holy, <laughs> you know, this is crazy. Yeah. Uh, so it, it pays for itself. Just That's awesome. And I saw traffic. at one point you were getting 56 X ROAs. Dude, it was, that was, <laughs> <laughs> those are wild times. This mind you, this is like 2019, yeah. you know, and that's, that was at lower spend. I think the biggest day we, we had a 1.46 million day. Holy <laughs> selling shirts, <laughs> selling t-shirts. That's insane. Selling t-shirts. And, and the pro the crazy thing about that day was that our daily spend limit, it was newer. You take a company from, they were doing, they had done 1.3 million before we came through, before I came through. And then we take them up to, you know, 5 million in a month and 1.5 in a day. It's going to break everything. Right. So our daily spend limit, if I could have spent more, we would have, and we would have done a lot more, but yeah. Facebook caps, how much you can spend, you know? So it took a, took a while to get that up. I feel up now as you're making all this money, you're dealing with some mental stuff, right? Yeah. 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 I think always, I think always most of the people that are turned on, like, like you see him and you're like, that guy's always at, at a 10, mm -hmm. always at a 10. Those are kind of the people that in my eyes, you just need to ask how they are, mm. you know, and it's most of the time, the people that nobody ever, it's the comedians, the, the life of the party, mm -hmm. these types of people that are always going that, that typically kind of struggle with mental health. Right. Cause they're overcompensating, right? Mm. They're yeah. putting all their eggs in one basket. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's it's a lot, man. Yeah, it is. A so, lot did you handle. start having like anxiety attacks? So, no, no, I think so. I struggle. Let let me back up. So, I I struggled with heavy depression. So, mm -hmm. I in high school, my whole life, depression was was not a thing. Yeah, yeah, right. Like it was like just be happy. Your friends are depressed. And you're like, no, nah, just be happy. <laughs> I, I and I never understood it. I really didn't because I'm a pretty positive person. It just didn't make sense to me. Mm. So, what had actually happened was. Um, and I'll try to get through this without, like, it, I got in an accident with my family. And uh, do you know what a razor is? Like razor. A, si a side by side. It's okay. like a Polaris razor. It's like a four seat four wheeler with a oh, cage. So there's no like uh, doors and windows? No doors, windows, but it's got like a roll cage on okay. it. Uh, and we were out with the family. I had my whole family in there and I actually rolled um, my vehicle. Damn. And one of my daughters was ejected and the other one actually got rolled up on. Holy. Like. I, I could, I found my one daughter after everything I said, I couldn't find my other, the lift the thing up off my daughter, um, unconscious long story short, they had to be life flown. She had to, the one that was rolled on, had to get a brain surgery. Damn. And dude, maybe, maybe the darkest, darkest time in my life as a parent, if you're a parent, you'll learn really like your kids are your life. And you don't really realize until maybe that's, possibly going to be taken from you how important they are so wow. like we went through this thing uh i'm an entrepreneur so i didn't have insurance yeah yeah. right like it, i just self-pay everything uh so like with the life flight with everything added up thank god they're fine you know mm -hmm. uh they were they all healed okay um we got them back but medical bills Probably we're talking six like, figures right we're talking literally half a million dollars holy half a million dollars in medical bills that you know that puts a lot of weight on a person oh, yeah. having that much debt. Like, I don't care how much money you're making. That's a lot of money. Right. So for the first year we dealt with just the kids, make sure the kids are okay. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it, it, it put a damper on my marriage. Mm. Like, because all we were focusing on were the kids. We had no time for us. Wow. So then our marriage struggles. So then we worked a full year on the marriage. And then after the marriage, you know, counseling did everything. We're good. I finally, two years later, got to step back and focus on myself and be like, dude, I'm pretty up. Wow. Like, cause that's my fault. I was driving. Right. Yeah. And yeah, it just put me in a really bad headspace. And what had like, that was the first time that it, I actually started to experience depression. Mm -hmm. And it was like something I had never felt that took out like literally a chemical imbalance that I could not shut off. And mm -hmm. I'd never felt that in my life that like go away and it would not go away. And it just, the hard I, it would just get worse and worse and compound and compound. Uh, and it led me into a pretty dark spot, man. Damn. Like try like, tried a lot of things. Um, I'm good now. Uh, but like therapy, pharmaceutical drugs, all the things to try to help. And none of it really helped. Wow. Um, but we're, we're good now. I did, 
I did a lot of alternative medicine is actually what kind of changed that for me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's something I want to talk about because that's something that's not really offered when people are going through situations like this. So that, how did that come about? So what happened was, so once again, going to therapy, I hate therapy, not for me. Yeah. You know, you're feeling this way because of this. It's like, it didn't work for me either. Dude, I, I just had a hard time with it and I tried and it just didn't work. So then I went the route, a typical American goes to go to the doctor and get drugs, right? Yeah. So then I'm on antidepressants and I feel like a, like, like a wall. Mm-hmm. I'm like a walk, uh, walking around rock that has <laughs> no personality, no anything. I was just so vanilla, right? Yeah. Um, it was just a bad thing for me. So the medication didn't work. So then like, what else are you going to do? Right. I read a book called stealing fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't even remember the name of the, it's Keller or something like that. Keller Williams. Was, yeah. Uh, that sounds right. Okay. Uh, uh, something <laughs> like that. Um, it's called stealing fire. And it talked about like, um, how the top performing CEOs and Navy SEALs, how they get into flow state. And it talked a little bit about MDMA and, and its effects on PTSD mm. uh, and the depression following. So like, then I looked into that, got into Huberman a little bit and realized that there's like significant, significant evidence that, that MDMA is, is extremely helpful for PTSD induced uh, depression. Wow. You know, psilocybin therapy is great for just regular depression, mm-hmm. but PTSD induced depression, which is what I had. Uh, they suggest MDMA therapy. Interesting. So I, dude, I looked, uh, I, I looked for a doctor. I looked for, so I found a therapist, did that. Um, I did the MDMA therapy. I did the psilocybin therapy. Mm-hmm. And then I actually, uh, like the last step I did ayahuasca. Wow. Full send. Full send, dude. I would like, when you're struggling with this, I'm talking like, and I'm not talking a little depression. I'm talking like Damn. depression. Like, Damn. like when you're in that state of mind, my answer to the depression was to the debt. Like I got five, but I have a $2 million life insurance policy. And, and I know this isn't right to think this way, but when you're going through this, it's like, dude, if I got in an accident, my family would be set. Right. There would be no debt. There would be no anything. They, they don't need me anyways. I'm the one causing these problems. Damn. So like, dude, I had it all mapped out. Holy crap. I had it all mapped out. I knew when, I knew where. It, it, I called, I raised my life insurance. Um, so when you're in that spot, dude, you try anything, dude. Right. I, I was open to anything. So like I did the MDMA, I did the, the psilocybin therapy. And then I, I, I did the ayahuasca two rounds, two rounds of that with a sh- with a full shaman and mm-hmm. everything. And I swear to God, it's never came back. Whoa. Like I'll, I'll get, I'll get down. But when you've experienced true depression and like the chemical imbalance and you can't shut it off, that's never came back. Holy crap. From yeah. ayahuasca? Twice. Two times. What, what did you see specifically that gave you so much conviction? So like, if you want to go through the full journey, right? Like, like my, okay, I'll take you through a journey. Yeah. So to. we sat, we sat and, and, and you take the ayahuasca, you've got a shaman there to kind of guide you through the process. It's mm-hmm. not something that I would ever suggest you take recreationally, right. which I've heard of people doing, <laughs> which made no sense. Like, don't do that. <laughs> But I sat with a, a shaman and we worked through this two day thing. You fast before you mm-hmm. get your body prepared, you do this. And basically what had come was I was long story short, I was in the galaxy in a glass box with God. Mm. And I sat in this glass box with him and on the walls were trials and tribulations. And I had a little basket, like you're in a grocery store and I was just picking, these <laughs> things. I was just picking trials and tribulations and all these things. And God literally said, like, that's enough. You're good. And I was just like, I want more. Mm. I want to be stronger. I want more. So I just kept adding. Um, and then he, he said that one in there basically pulled out the wreck. And he's like, this is over. This is done. You can put it back on the shelf. So I put it back on the shelf. Um, and then that was, kind of, that was kind of the whole thing was that I had – I chose these tribulations. I wanted this, Mm. you know, I wanted to, I wanted to be strong. One of the things that I got out of this whole situation, right. Was prior to the wreck, I have four kids, right. And during the wreck, I had three and my wife was pregnant with the fourth. Um, Dude, I was working like, will you grind? Like as an entrepreneur, like I'm sure, you know, you're putting in seven, seven days a week. Yep. You never stop. And this, this, and I have kids at home, but I'm just always turned on when you do an online business, money never sleeps. Yeah. 
So I'd be home and I'd be like working away. My kids would be like, dad, look at this. I'm like, yeah, cool. <laughs> looking around, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and literally one of the biggest blessings in my life was this accident. Because after that, you just realize how, how fragile life is. Mm. It's fragile. Yeah. And it could be taken away at any moment, right? So I kind of stepped back and I, I realized how important it was for me to be present with the wow. kids. And ever since then, I've had a completely different relationship with my kids. Amazing. Like literally, I, I get home from work. The, and, and I suggest you, if you ever have kids, mm-hmm. you don't have kids, right? Not yet. I want okay. them now. You want them. Yeah. Awesome. You're young though. 27. Yeah. I'm okay, thinking 30s. So you're getting their 30s, somewhere yeah. around. That's about right. 30s. Um, one of the things I suggest you do when they're old enough is when I get home at six o'clock, you know, I put my phone on my nightstand by my bed mm. and I just leave it there until I put the kids to bed at eight o'clock. Wow. That's two hours. That's two hours of your day that you're completely devoted to the kid. Cause you'll learn with kids, you're on your phone and they're like, dad, look at this. And you're like, eh, <laughs> you're just not tuned in, right? right? You're not really tuned in with them. So I'll put it on the nightstand ever since the accident. It's just the kids time for mm. two hours where I just focus. That's the only time I have with them. I work full time, you yeah. know? So like though that two hours a night is the most valuable time to me. Incredible. And I can just spend with the kids with no phone, no interruption. Dude, social media will wait. Emails can wait. Mm-hmm. Text can wait two hours. Business can wait two hours. Um, your kids can't. Mm. But your kids, when they grow older, they're not going to say, my dad made a ton of money. They're going to say, my dad was present. Mm. You know, my dad was always there. Right. Right. So that's kind of the. The silver lining of the accident, the depression, all of that stuff, what's came out of that is my appreciation for my children mm. and how fragile life is. What a beautiful story, man. It's crazy. That is nuts. It's, I actually got through it without crying, so that's pretty good. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to <was gonna, laughs> cry, bro. Holy crap. <laughs> that's such, such deep trauma it's that you heavy. had to overcome, dude. It's heavy, man. And, and, and now, taking the step back now, hindsight, greatest best blessing in my, in my life. Wow. Because prior to it, I was grinding and and maybe maybe i would have never got out of that mm. i would have never st- spent the proper time with my kids yeah so it's almost like the universe had a plan for you to go no through doubt. something like that no doubt no doubt and now had had it ended worse then i probably wouldn't be singing the same song but my kids are great everything's great and i just realized you know how fragile it all wow. is. wow so. incredible man and then from there you got super into biohacking and health too right yeah yeah this is like once again once you learn how fragile this all is, you, you really appreciate what you have and especially your health. Mm. Like I'm, I'm a freak. Like, and I, <laughs> and I think mo- a lot of the entrepreneurs that I know that really understand how your body works, they're, they're the same yeah, way. Tony Robbins wrote a whole all, book on it. They're all the same way, right? You don't realize how important your sleep is. Like I, I, I so as not, once again, as an entrepreneur, I was the type that's like sleep when you sleep when you die. Right. I need five hours sleep max, maybe, you know, four and a half I can do. Um, and I was just always go, 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 go. I read a, I read a book called why we sleep, mm. um, by Matthew Walker yeah. is what it is, bro. You want to read a book that'll scare the shit out of you. Read, read why we sleep. Really, It's linked to everything. Leading cause of cancer, leading cause of, of autism in children Holy crap. is lack of REM cycle sleep while their mom's pregnant. Damn. So let's say the mom's up drinking caffeine all the time and not sleeping properly. Your baby can't get REM cycle sleep. Oh my God. Right? It's a leading cause of autism in kids. So when the mom sleeps, the baby sleeps. That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you, well, once again, if she's stimulating herself with caffeine and all this stuff and out, like not giving proper rest to mm-hmm. herself, the baby's not resting either. Right. Dang. So like it's really important. Sleep's like the most important thing to you. Like the, the leading. Yeah. The, the third leading cause of death in the United States is medical malfunction, mm-hmm. bad practice from lack of sleep. What? Doctors. Oh, my third God. Third largest killer in the United States is doctors malpractice because of lack of sleep. Yeah. I see you got the aura ring, right? So you track your sleep. Aura, whoop, you name it. You got bro. both. <laughs> dude, I, dude, I'm a, dude, I got, so I got a sleep number bed. Okay. Uh, what does that I, do? Sleep number won the CES award two years ago. For the technology, the leading technology really? in the world was a bed. Why? Because this bed actually regulates your body temperature. Like if you're too hot. Mm. So to get proper sleep, your body temperature needs to drop two degrees. So it'll actually cool your body and warm your feet. Whoa. So your feet need to be warm. Your, your body needs to be cool. And then this body, this bed actually will like harden and soften depending on how you're moving during the night. Mm. 
Mm, so if you're moving cool. too much, it'll like soften up. So you stop moving and it'll harden up and then it can sit up if you're snoring. Like it knows if you're snoring. Holy it'll like, crap. It'll like sit you up six inches so you don't snor- So like I do that. I do the aura ring. I do the whoop. I'm tracking every second of REM cycle and deep cycle sleep. I love that. I'm about to get one of those mattresses. Dude, they're rad. They're really, they're, they take a little bit to get used to. Give them time because it's like a glorified air mattress mm. and, and it's not the most comfortable the first couple times you sleep on them, but give it some time. I've never had better sleep than I have right now. I can see it. Like there's, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that though too. Like prior, like no phone time, two hours. Like do you sit on your phone in bed? Most people do. Yeah, but now I turned on the blue light blocking blue and now light, I could sleep way easier. Yeah, no doubt. Blue light block. If you're on your phone in your bed, wear the blue light blockers. Change your phone so that it's not so that it's in the red light or the yeah. the yellow light, whatever it is. Um, and then try to cut down the lights. So heavy LED lights in your house. Cut down all that stuff, and then just kind of wind down before bed. And then your circadian rhythm. It's always the same. Like the best time for you to sleep is really like nine until eight o'clock they want you to get eight eight hours of sleep Mm -hmm. there's very few people that actually there's um the people that there's only five percent of the population that need less than five hours of sleep wow how do you find out if you're one of them uh there's a test there's a test and i forget what it's called but basically they run your blood or whatever and then they'll know whether you're one of those five percent but i run into people all the time it's just like oh i i I only need five hours (laughs) Literally only 5% of the nation needs that. Dude, like Everybody yeah. else needs a full eight hours of sleep. I remember they asked all the sharks about like how long you sleep. And Damon John answered like four or five hours. I was like, what the hell? And then I, I don't want to jinx it, but he got cancer like a few Bleeding years. Bleeding cause of cancer. Yeah. Is, is, is lack of sleep. I don't know sleep. if there was a relation there. No, there definitely is. Read, read why we sleep. It's all data, factual information that they've ran tests on. Bleeding cause of cancer. Once again, heart attack. You know, do you want to know what the number one day for heart attack in the United States is? Is it Monday? Nope. It's the day after daylight savings time. Oh. Because you lose one hour of sleep and it just spikes heart attacks because Mm. people that they're so used to that. And when you cut a full hour off of sleep from a whole nation, that's the, that's the highest day for heart attacks. Holy crap. I could see it though. Cause when I have early flights, I feel like the whole day. Always, always. It's so important, man. Like I, like. I cannot emphasize and, and muscle recovery way more than so retaining what you so there's three two cycles of sleep you got deep sleep mm-hmm. and then you got your REM sleep right and then you got light sleep but like deep sleep is where so during your day you learn everything deep sleep is where you actually filter out what you learned and mm. say you're like yeah this is good no this is not like yes yeah, this is important no this is not and then REM cycle sleep is where you internalize that right? wow so if you're getting REM cycle sleep, you'll, you won't remember all the stuff that you learned during the day. That's what internalizes, mm. right? So you should be getting quality at least over an hour of both deep and REM cycle sleep to properly learn and retain what you learned during the day. And there's a million things that you can take um, to sleep, like sleeping pills, horrible for you, yeah. really bad for you. Um, Xanax, one of the worst things you can take to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to, like, I got prescribed Xanax during this wreck mm. because I had crazy anxiety. And I didn't realize how bad it was for you. I, I, I would just take it because it would help me sleep. Yeah. And I would pass out, right? And then it wasn't until, like, a month in, I went to my doctor and I was like, no, I've been taking it every night. And he's like, eh, <laughs> let's not. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, it's a control A substance. It's like one of the most addictive substances there are. Let's not take Xanax. But when I would take Xanax, my REM cycle, I would get good sleep, deep sleep, mm-hmm. but no REM cycle sleep. Damn. So my brain, my REM, I wasn't retaining anything. So like I would measure all of the stuff and you name it, all the drugs, all that. I could tell you what they all do to your sleep. Do you know what the worst one for your sleep period it is? Caffeine. Alcohol. 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 Caffeine, you need to stop after like, it has like a six hour and like lifespan to it. So yep. you stop after like 6 p.m. You should be cool. But Alcohol is by far and away, and it's not even close mm. to the worst thing that you can do for your sleep. So the myth of a nightcap, I'm going to take a little nightcap and go to bed. No, it completely shuts down all your REM cycles. Sleep. Holy crap. Shuts it down. So like you'll sleep, you think you slept, but you don't remember anything from the day before. And you don't retain <laughs> any of this stuff. So, so yeah, I, I pay attention to that yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's good closely. to know because there's college students that pull all nighter studying and then they don't remember. <laughs> Dude, dude. So, uh, you know what residency is? No. For doctors? Oh, kind of. Doctors that do residency. That's basically where you go and you work for like, I think it's 72 hours, like three days straight, no Mm -hmm. sleep. 
right? Everybody does it in college. That's what you do. You go to residency, you go, you work three days, no sleep, and then you take three days off, whatever. Mm. So the whole practice of residency was created by a doctor that said this was good for you. And there hadn't been any, any study, studies. They later found he was addicted to What? The guy who invented residency was addicted to And they didn't realize how bad this was for you by like not sleeping. So um, once again, one in 20 doctors will kill a patient because of lack of sleep. Jesus. One in 20, right? So it's, it's, it's really prevalent. If you're going into a doctor, if you're going to have a surgery, Ask them how much sleep they have. You have wow. the right to know. You have the right to know. So I would have never thought to ask that. For, dude, one in 20 people killed because of lack of sleep of a doctor, right? So that, and then when you're studying, you know how people cram for and study all night and they don't sleep. And then they go in to yeah. take their test. They retain none of that. <sighs> the most important part of studying and learning is the sleep following. Like you need a full eight hours of sleep so that you're rent, so that you can internalize what you mm. learn. Because if you don't get that sleep, it's just in, in one ear, out the other. Yep. I've split tested it with podcasts where I'm like traveling early in the morning and I barely slept. I'm way worse. No doubt. Like it's not even close. No doubt. Wow. That's good to know about the surgeon. If I ever get surgery, I'm asked for his aura sleep score. Yeah, dude, bro, what, what's your <laughs> sleep score? What's your whoop say? That's nuts. <laughs> what other uh, biohacking do you do other than the sleep stuff? Man, I do like. The red light therapy. I've got a sauna. I've got ice baths. So I do like, uh, do you know the PMF mat? Yeah, I just started doing that. Oh, dope. dope. Yeah. yeah. So I have a th- I have a sauna with a PMF mat in there. Oh, it's with, in it. In it. Wow. And red light in it. So I've got the infrared, PMF, and then the infrared light as well. That's cool. Uh, all in one spot. So I'll do that. I'll do the ice bath. I go to the gym. I, 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 that's the one non-negotiable I have in my life. It's gym. the most underrated. Um, thing that you can do for your emotions and for your physical well-being and mentally mm. for your mental well-being is exercise. Like I, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for depression. Mm-hmm. That was the one thing that, that would always help. Like when I feel that way, go work out. If you can get your heart rate, you know, up for 15 minutes a day, it releases endorphins into your brain that mm. makes you happy. Wow. And most people don't realize it's literally faking happiness by working out and getting it done. So then I'll go to the gym. I do that every day, except Sunday. I take Sundays off, mm-hmm. but literally, I don't think I've missed. And yeah, that's my non. Even that's when incredible. I travel, you've inspired I, me because I've been slacking on the gym, dude. It's it's the most, and even for your mental clarity, mm-hmm. like it really is. Like if you if you get into good working out and and releasing the endorphins into your brain, your your brain fog just completely eliminates. Wow! Right, right. You think clearly. Uh, it, your your day starts better. You don't go work out before bed. That's mm-hmm. bad for your sleep. Is it? Yeah. And anyway, because it raises your body temperature, right? So how soon before bed would you say? Three. If you're going to work out at night, work out three hours before you go to bed. Got it. Right. Uh, but I would prefer, I, I, I would suggest working out in the morning just okay. because of the endorphins that are released and you go into your day just on fire. Got it. So I'll start waking up an hour earlier and working Dude, out. It, 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 I cannot emphasize enough how important it is. Like it, it's changed my life dramatically mm. and do it early because if you wait until the middle of the day to go work out life happens dude right like you, you got a call you've got this fired you got to put out but if you'll go at like 5 30 in the morning before business before everybody even wakes up mm. you're done at 6 30 and then then life starts so right. nothing will ever interrupt that you can get in that habit of it man it's amazing i love that man what are you working on next and where can people find you uh, I'm working on a really dope project. Dude. Yeah. You yeah, talk dude, about it or not? Most, yeah. Yeah. I'll, like the most excited I've ever been about a project. Whoa. Like I've always, let's put it this way. I put 10 out of 10 effort into a lot of projects that are like three out of 10. Like, mm. I've got my agency. It's great. You know, but the exit's minimal. Yeah. Right. I've got tough ring, which is a silicone ring brand. Great. But it's an e-commerce exit. Three X multiple. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I stepped into the VC world for a minute and then I, I it wasn't for me, but I realized there's a big gap. VC funds are trying to raise money mm. from anybody and anywhere. They're like, Hey, do you know anybody that has 250 liquid mm-hmm. and is an accredited investor? And it's like, it's all referral based. Yep. Really. And then I've got investors or friends and family reaching out to me saying, Hey, I got a hundred grand. Where do I invest in? Mm. There's nothing to connect these two. Mm. There really isn't there. There's nothing like it. So I'm making a marketplace uh, I've got the MVP model done. We'll start raising money for it next week. And then basically what it's going to do is it's going to connect. It's going to go through your whole portfolio and say like, you're heavy on residential, you're light on stocks. You need, you need this, you need that. Yeah. 
um, here's an investment for you. And, and our platform will connect them with the fund. And then we take a percentage of the deal. Wow. Of each one That's of these. brilliant. Dude. Yeah. So they can't access the investors. Investors can't access them. Once the deal's done, they'll know. But like until then, we facilitate. Dude, it I'd love to be an affiliate for that, actually. Dude, you got it. Because I'm the same as you. I have both sides. Dude, and there's also, so like a lot of these VC deals, like you have to be an accredited investor and you have to have $250,000 liquid. And then you can get this wild ass deal, 18% over two months. Wow. But your normal little investor could never even get access to those deals. You yeah. can't. One, you don't know the people. Two, you're not accredited and you don't have enough money. Mm. But this website will be able to make what's called an SVP mm -hmm. um, to where people can invest. Let's say you want to go into that. You got a hundred grand. I want to go into it. I got 150. Yeah. It'll form an LLC for us together. And then we'll get our oh, equity brilliant. split and invest into these deals. So it opens up VC investing to your average day job. That's great. Cause people are fighting for 8% a year. Dude, average fighting job. for it. And there's deals that are, would blow your mind that these VC, VC guys get, but you just never hear about it. Cause you're like, or I don't ever hear about it because I'm not accredited yeah. and so forth. And now we can get, dude, access that's to incredible. It. Cause when you factor in inflation taxes and everything, all of it, 8% a year is like 2%. All of it. And then last, last part of it is it will be managed by AI. So like you'll upload your full portfolio and then it'll look through your whole portfolio and say, listen, you need more stocks mm -hmm. or you need more resident residential real estate. And it will find the deals for you. And wow. then you don't have to pay. Like normally you have to pay a fund manager 10% yeah. of everything that they're doing for you. Right. You don't have to pay. You anything. just eliminate just part that of the fee. Too. Yeah. That's and brilliant. AI sees that stuff in real time. So as deals come through and deals come in, they see it immediately. Wow. As to where most VC fund, like a uh, fund manager wouldn't even know that that deal came out. They couldn't even tell you about it as mm. like an investment advisor. Yeah. They couldn't even tell you about it. AI. Would. That's incredible, bro. Can't wait to see that. Um, we'll link it below if it's out by the time this airs. For sure. Awesome, man. Thanks for coming on. And uh, I appreciate yeah, it, man. Yeah, you killed this it, man. Awesome. Inspiring story. Thanks for watching, guys, as always. See you next time. Thanks.